So the second part about Ricky, um, this part is important because this is a spiritual side to the abuse um, that I had to go through. So it seems, so when I was there, um, Ricky got this letter and the letter said that if he was, if he wanted to, he could become part of this group that was going to allow him to make all this money from nothing and um, be able to control everything I did and said and um, it told him not to let his spouse read this letter. Well, he did. He let me read it. Um, ha! Jokes on you, Illuminati. Um, anyways, that's exactly who this letter was from. Um, in this time, I learned that my um, ex-husband at the time had been a lot very involved in um, black magic and dark arts. And um, I believed in Jesus. I mean, I didn't necessarily practice what I preached at that time. And I mean, I guess we all don't most of the time or sometimes. But um, I believed in Jesus. And so for me to... I just realized, I just realized the time I was just so unequally yoked, it was, it was scary. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so after I left him go, um, I was at his house for about a month, and I tried to work it out with him. Um, this man, uh, I believe, had practiced some kind of black magic on me because, uh, and I can't prove it. I mean, I can't prove that at all. But, um, he, just the whole time I was there, I mean, I know it's Texas and there's big spiders, but the whole time I was there, I only saw one giant spider, and that was it. And, um, after he went to jail that day, because he went to jail. The police department came got and to make sure that he could um, be out of the home until I could get out of there. So for 30 days he was in jail. I did not press charges. <sighs> Anyways, um, about the black magic thing, I'm pretty sure he sent spiders after me. Uh, big spiders, very poisonous spiders, but God was with me and he allowed me to recognize what it was and he allowed me to um, get to them before they got to me. So I trapped these spiders and prayed in the name of Jesus to rebuke them from whatever curse was put to them and um, yeah. So, anyways, I got out of that situation. My parents came and rescued me. Um, in 2009, I got put out of that situation. So, after I left my ex-husband and came home, things got really dark for me. Um, like, really dark. Uh, there was, like, a whole period of time, I gotta tell you, I pretty much blacked out, kind of. Um, between when I got home and a certain point in 2011. I mean, all of 2010, really, I don't, I really don't even remember. Other than trying to find a job, and I couldn't. That's all I remember. I was looking for work. I, you know, I only had the one job, <laughs> and then I had a gap of, like, a couple years or a year or whatever in between, so it was, like, hard as all get out to find a job, especially since I never had but one job. <laughs> um, anyways, so, in 2011, um, I did the most stupid thing I've ever done in my whole life. Um, like an idiot, I actually, um, invited the devil to come inside me like an idiot, and less than a week later, he was trying to get me to commit suicide. He, I was walking down the hallway, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, um, I swallowed a whole entire bottle of Drasdom, 60 pills at once. Um, I can't even take that many pills. I can't even take like, even 15 pills on a normal day. Um, I immediately realized that it wasn't me that wanted to die. And uh, I screamed out for my mom. I said, Mom, 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 I took a whole bottle of pills and I don't want to die. And um, she got me to the um, to the hospital on the way there. They put my stomach with charcoal and um, some, and I got to the hospital and they were just, you know, trying to get take care of me. and. Um, I'm, I know when you die, like, all your bowels, like, this part's really gross, but all your bowels get loose, like, your bowels and everything fluid just comes out of your body when you die. That's what I've been told. And, um, that, that happened to me on the table. <laughs> it was pretty gross. But the nurse, the nurse thought I just had done that. Like, no, I don't do that. <laughs> Anyways, um, they ended up putting me in the mental ward for about a month because of that, taking those pills. And, um, man, a lot of satanic things were happening during that time. It was, it was a horrible time. And, um. So glad God got me out of all this and um, next video. So now we're going through even more of the dark times that I went through um, during 2011. Um, a lot of that was also blacked out, but there's parts that I remember um, very vividly. Um, I blocked them out, I think, because of the trauma. That was... It was pretty traumatic, I feel like. It was a pretty traumatic time, spiritually, because... Um, yeah, here I, here I was, a believer, asking for the devil to come to me and all this crap. But, um, like, so I... Um, during that time, um, they put me in this uh, psych ward, and it was awful. Like, there were just so many demonic things going on. Now, I'm not a person that's ever seen or heard things that aren't there. Um, no, that's not me. But during this year, I did. Uh, I saw and heard things that were supposedly not supposed to be there. Uh, and when I went after the um, after that place, the psych ward, they actually um, court ordered me to go to a recovery center for six months because of the pills. Um, and the trust them. And so I went to this recovery center, but I can tell you, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was supposed to be there because I didn't, I wasn't an addict. I didn't take pills. I didn't, you know, I wasn't like a junkie or anything. That's what this place is for, I guess. But, um, 
but um, when I was there, I went through a really dark spiritual darkness for me because, um, I mean, I was seeing demons. I'm pretty sure I had been possessed at the time with something. I'm not sure what I was seeing, but I was having a lot of delusions about things. And I remember toward the end of it, um, I it was about six months of depravity of just horrible things that I had to see. Um, like, I even looked in the mirror one day and there was, like, literally two sets of eyeballs in my head and I about freaked out, dude. <laughs> that was... I don't even like looking in the mirror anymore because of that, to be honest with you. Um, but, yeah, but God is bigger than all of this, so... And God is bigger than Satan, so there's no reason to be afraid. But, um, so I still look in the mirror because God's bigger, but... <sighs> um, so something I haven't really gone over because, um, I guess not too important. Nobody really wants to remember their exes, but... Um, obviously with my mom and previous to city, I had a lot of exes and, um... But during 2012, um, I met this guy at my best friend's house. Well, I met him and his brother and his cousin. Anyway, so whatever. I met him, and um, he was homeless, but um, I felt for him, you know, and I... So I would drive around the car and help him do whatever he had to do, and then we started dating, and like, he told me he wanted to marry me, but he'd only marry me if I'd give him my car, and I told him no, I wasn't going to give him my car. My parents had helped me buy that car, and I had to pay them back for part of it, which I never did finish paying back, and I feel like a horrible daughter for it, but... Um, anyway, so that's another story. Um, so I was driving around the car, and... Uh, I just got into all this crime and stuff and was doing stupid stuff like stealing gas and um you know, just stupid stuff like stealing gas and well I remember I was at the stoplight right near where my friend used to live because um in that bad neighborhood I told you about and they were bumping the music rap music real loud and I was driving like normal day and I just remember looking at that light and just looking around me at everything in my life and I just said god I'm, I'm sick of it I don't, I don't know what to do to get out of this but can you please help me somehow some way get out of this situation and like nobody knew I was praying they were all just around me like rapping I tried to pretend like I was still like you know bumping my head to the music but in my mind I was just like I'm done with this life you know I didn't know how to get out of it but I was done with it and so um I about a week later <laughs> I was going to go steal my quote unquote last tank of gas I was ever going to steal well it was the last tank of gas I stole but not because it was the last tank of gas I was ever going to steal on my part <laughs> well the reason why it was the last tank is because um uh, I just had this overwhelming feeling that this was but this gas, this, this place that I was doing gas from was going to change my life. And it did. <laughs> um, the guy didn't put the pump back in, and I didn't have any money. So, I got caught. But I didn't get caught there. Uh, I Previously, like I said, I was doing sales, um, and I was selling Cutco knives. And I had a Cutco knife in my car because I was about to go sell it to my buddy. But um, this guy didn't know I had one. So, after I stole that gas, uh, I got caught. So, uh, I went to jail the next day uh, and I ended up going to prison <laughs> um, yeah I got 80 months because <laughs> they had called that attempted robbery they dropped it down to attempted robbery because um, I had the knife in my car so um, yeah, I did not harm anybody I didn't harm that guy I mean maybe I mentally did probably and I did harm somebody by taking something and I was completely wrong um, I don't have no problem saying that but um, when I went to jail and prison I mean, they, they call jail and prison God's hotel for a good reason. <laughs> because in that jail cell, I was so at my low, like the lowest, I mean, I, I don't know, I've made a lot of lows, <laughs> but I was so broken from everything and myself and what I've been doing. I mean, right before I went there, my friend told me later on, I was becoming such a, a scary person to people in my life that, that even the people that were, you know, doing bad stuff with me, like they were starting to be scared of me, you know, uh, which I don't seem like a very scary person, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't think so, but, um, I could, I can be scary when I'm in my sinful state, um, but I, when I was on that jail cell, I just broke down, I just broke down, not because of the concrete or, because I had realized how tired I was from running, and just running and running. The Bible says there is no rest for the wicked, and that's kind of how I felt like my life was going, it's just no rest whatsoever. Every day, hustle, 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 hustle. Every day, do this. You know what I mean? <sighs> and I was just so tired and broken, and I finally cracked open my Bible. Yeah, I'd read some of the Bible before, but I wasn't reading my Bible like that. Not like I did in jail and prison. I just, I finally, I just was searching so deep for Jesus, and he was finding me right where I needed him. So, while I was being broken on that floor, um, man, Jesus really met me where I was at. And what he did was, he not only met me where I was at, but he showed me all the times in my life where he carried me, which was a lot. 
I mean, all the things I've told you so far, it's not even everything that's happened, but the highlights of the of the desperate times in my life, you know, which seems to be a pattern. <laughs> um, but Jesus just, he just broke down to the deeper parts of me that were not even willing to surrender. So when I first got into the Word in County, I was almost as if I was a baby Christian again. I just was learning everything all anew. And then when I went to prison, um, uh, I started going to this class, uh, Chaplain Holmes class, and man, that pastor just changed my life, I gotta tell you. He used to be an atheist, and he's now a pastor, he's now a pastor, and he just, he just knows the stuff, you know what I mean? He knows the word, and I was so desperately desperate for the word. I needed to know the deeper things of God, and um, I still do. We all need to keep learning all the time, because God's never going to be someone we can ever find out completely. That's the wonderful thing about him. We can always be learning of him. But um, because of him and because of this girl in county, <laughs> she bet me a honey bun that the words, I this too shall pass, was not in the Bible. And I didn't believe her because my dad had been saying it for years, this too shall pass. Guess what? It is not in the Bible. <laughs> I have read it three times. The concept is there. But those words are not there. <laughs> I really believe they were there for a long time. But anyways, so when I went... Um, into prison, I started to, I was new, I mean, nobody knew me, so I was target, <laughs> just because I'm a big girl, so I'm intimidating, and nobody really knew me. Um, I made enemies before I made friends, but I did make, at the end of this day, I gotta tell you, I only had one enemy left, and that was, and I still pray for her, but, um. So, when I was in the prison, um, this is where I'm gonna talk about one of the deaths that really affected me, I mean, You know, all the deaths when I was in prison really affected me. Every time I called my mom and she'd tell me, Sarah, are you sitting down? Man, I knew somebody had died. <laughs> somebody had died. Anyway, this time my mom, she asked me to sit there, are you sitting down? And I said, I don't know, mom, who died? And uh, she told me that my cousin, <sighs> she told me my cousin had hung himself. I did a dream when he was 18 years old. I just can't tell you. <laughs> I was so upset, like, I couldn't believe that. I don't blame myself a lot because I just felt like I was such a bad influence by doing what I'd done, you know. It was bad. You know, anyways. And when I was there, I was just so angry. I was getting, in the first eight months of being there, I was on the medium side with the doors open and closed and open and closed all day long. It's awful. Um, I mean, I had to witness a girl slit her throat open. There was another girl that got convinced by a a group of girls who were exercising demonic things to kill herself. I mean, it was awful. The kitchen was awful. Um, that's where you had to work. But, uh, so then, anyways, when I was over there, I would say the first eight months were just really hard on me emotionally because I wasn't really going anywhere. I was just sitting in a cell, dealing with drama, going to work in a kitchen where I hated it, and there was black mold, and they were making us move boxes that said not fit for human consumption. And then when the people came to look at the prison to see if our food was up to par, they made us hide those things. And Yeah, that was the salmon, the salmon that was not fit for human consumption. It was actually... So when I went to prison, um, I went to the minimum side after I'd been in the medium side for eight months. Uh, they had entered into a, a garden program over there. And uh, I just remember medium was so dark. There's There's nothing but concrete and doors and yelling and nothing good and then uh i went to medium side and i saw that garden girl i almost started crying <laughs> i saw that garden and there was life in that garden and i was just so happy to be somewhere where even though i was in prison i was just so happy to be somewhere where i could see flowers and trees and uh it was awesome and then uh when i was in that side of the prison i my work my work from the lord like just started to begin like uh god just started working some amazing things that happened over there like started giving me songs to write and and for people in there and he taught me how to crochet so I can crochet socks for the homeless and and so I could you know talk to other people about Jesus and so I could learn um something great and um he taught me gardening and, and he helped me learn how to garden I got into some programs that were awesome I learned how to garden I learned how to crochet um there's actually a picture of me in this Better Homes and Gardens magazine uh, I think that was 2015 or 16, I don't know. It was, uh, 
for their Homes and Gardens magazine. It was an article they were doing because we were working on a butterfly project there. And, uh, you know, I got to get published in a book. I was writing a lot of writing in a writing class. And um, I got to be published in a Write Around Portland book. And, uh, um, you know, I, I got to take two years of business through Mercy Corps. And I just got so many opportunities to learn. And one of those opportunities was this great program. It's called Anticipate. And, uh, and I, I can't say that the program structure was great but it was a great opportunity to you know the iron sharpened iron as believers we got to talk and learn more about jesus and, and it was awesome and the best part was is i still got to go to chaplain holmes class where we were learning revelation i mean i can't say that prison was a cupcake or anything <laughs> even though we call it a cupcake camp because it wasn't as hard as other women's prisons but um there was a lot of drama in prison and it was not easy to maintain composure especially when Man, they try your patience. Hmm. Um, so many times, the prison guards would not let us have soap or toilet paper. Or yeah, it was awful. Anyway, um, you know, definitely human rights things that most people would probably care about, but they don't because you're in prison. So anyway, uh, anyway, but when I was there, I got so many good opportunities. I got to sing for the Channel Two News um, a song I wrote and. Um, I got to meet this girl named Roxanne. She helped me put my music to the guitar because they let you buy guitars and she's about the only one there with a guitar. And, man, she could play guitar so good. Um, and she helped me put my music um, with the notes I had in my head on paper. You know, that's something I will never, I'm always grateful for. But more importantly, I got to know God so well in there. We got to study Revelation with Chaplain Holmes and I got to learn, we also studied Romans. and. Uh, that's about as far as we got. I was there in his class studying for three or four years because he, we studied it verse by verse, break it down. You know what I mean? Like, it was awesome. I wish I could study every book the way we studied those two books. I wish I had the life, I mean, it would take a lifetime to do it the way we did it, but I mean, it really helps you understand things, you know? Um, but so many times that there was girls in there that I can't tell you how many times God just used me or used somebody else around me to help me and we, our church in there, between the girls, just was so strong. Like, we we relied on each other, like the church in Acts, the book of Acts. It was, it was awesome. It was beautiful, and, um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. So one thing I want to address is, um, all my life I've struggled with being an angry person. Um, some people would say that I'm not angry because they don't really know me. <laughs> but they haven't seen some of the very angry things that I've had, outbursts I've had. Um, I've, I tell you, I hate my angry outbursts. They, they just make me sad because, uh, but God, God has helped me overcome so much of that. I'm sorry, I have really bad allergies. I'm allergic to my cats. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I love the cats though, so I just keep them here. But anyways, like, he's just helped me get over so many times when I was so angry, like, just came into my spirit when, you know, let me know he was there and that it was going to be okay, and, and, uh, through his word, I mean, I can't tell you how spiritually refreshing when you're a believer it is to read the word of God. It is, like, God is just, you know, there's so many times in prison or when crazy bad situations were happening in there where I would just surrender myself to him, and he would give me the most overwhelming peace I have ever felt in my whole life. There's no denying that it was God whatsoever. I mean, I just, there's no denying it. God is, Jesus has saved my life, not just my soul, but he's allowed me to have um, a joyful life here, even though I've been through so many trials. Um, you know, Paul, when he says to count it all joy, when you go through various trials, like, even the little trials I've been through so far, even though I haven't been for through full persecution yet, I, God, I know that God can give me joy. So when you're standing in the midst of all that's coming to us right now, even right now, I just, I can feel this joy inside me. I uh, just, I love God. He is amazing, and we are not. <laughs> we are so imperfect.